All right, today we will be covering lesson 11-1. And in this particular lesson, we're splitting it into two sections. We'll cover questions one to three, and then we'll cover example A. Let's go ahead and take a look at the intro together. The intro says, Greg Carpenter works for the Green Construction Company. The company is building a new recreation hall, and the roof of the hall will be supported by triangular trestles, like the ones shown below. Each of the truss contain pairs of congruent triangles. Greg's boss tells him that his first job will be to determine the side lengths and angle measures in the triangles that make up one of the trusses. Mount tip. Congruent triangles are triangles that have the same size and shape. More precisely, you have seen that two triangles are congruent if and only if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence of rigid motions. Take a look at the next page. The next page starts off by saying, Greg wonders if I know that two triangles are congruent and I know the side lengths and angle measures of one triangle, do I have to measure all the side and angles of the other triangle? Greg begins by examining two triangles from a truss. According to the manufacturer, the two triangles are congruent. Question one asks you, because the two triangles are congruent, one, can one triangle be mapped onto the other? If yes, what are the criteria for the mapping? Number two, suppose you use a sequence of rigid motions to map triangle ABC to triangle DEF. Find the image of each of the following under this sequence of transformation. AB goes to, BC goes to, AC goes to, angle A goes to, angle B goes to, angle C goes to. Number three, make use of structure. What is the relationship between line segment AB and line segment DE. What is the relationship between angle B and angle E? And how do you know? I'm going to go with a seven minute time limit on this. Seven minutes, work with your partners and see if you can come up with the answers to questions one to three. Go ahead, pause your video now. All right, the answers to question one, two, and three have been provided. In number one, I state each triangle can be mapped onto the other triangle by a sequence of rigid motions. In number two, I said AB maps to DE. I always look at it this way. If AB is here and it should map the same order, especially if we're trying to prove congruency. So A, B, D, E, B, C, that's the last two. So that should be E, F in the last two, okay? A, C would go D, E, okay? Angle A is my match to angle D. Angle B matches angle E. And angle C goes to F. What is the relationship between A, B, and D, E? Well, I know that AB is congruent to DE. And I know that angle B is congruent to angle E. Because there is a sequence of rigid motions that maps AB to DE, and a sequence of rigid motions that maps angle B to angle E. And in just a minute, I'm going to ask you what that rigid motion would be in order to get this triangle to map to here. On to your debriefing. 